Hello and welcome to another edition of Be Still My Soul. And today we're looking at Psalm 92. Psalm 92 is, is titled a psalm, a song for the Sabbath. Now, the word Sabbath uh, means rest. And in the Old Testament, the day of rest was the last day of the week, a, a Saturday. And in the New Testament, uh, it was changed to a Sunday, the Lord's Day. But the day of rest, the Sabbath, wasn't just a day for resting. It was a day for worship. It was a day when people gathered together to praise and to worship the Lord. And we still do that today. You see, the Sabbath is to be a day of uh, delight, a day of worship, a day uh, where we are renewed in our faith, where our joy is uh, in God is strengthened and renewed. And so the question for us is this, what, uh, what should our worship be like? Yeah. What should characterise the worship of God on the Sabbath? Well, the first thing we're told in verses 1 to 3 here in Psalm 92 is that our worship should be joyful. It's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. The first thing we're told is that worship is good. It, it's, it's good to give thanks to the Lord. It's good to sing praises to, to his name. It's good ethically. It's right to do that because he is the most high God. It's emotionally right because there's something about worship that frees us uh, and that gives uh, lifts our spirits and, and brings a joy into our hearts. It's good practically because it, it encourages others to worship God just as the psalmist is doing here. Uh, and worship should involve uh, declaring uh, God's uh, truth, declaring his character, his love, his faithfulness, uh, and this worship and this praise should be done morning and evening. Uh, yesterday we had a service. Uh, it was Sunday yesterday. We had a service in the morning and we had a Sunday service in the evening, praising and worshipping uh, the Lord. And, and we're to do it with musical instruments. It should be exuberant. It should, uh, uh, our, our praise and worship should be filled with joy. You see, there's something about worship that doesn't just express the joy we have in God, but completes the joy we have in God. You know, if, if uh, uh, someone has made you a, a, a cake, uh, a lovely chocolate cake, then you don't just, uh, you know, you thank them for it and, uh, and yeah, you, you, you eat some of it. Now, if you enjoy eating it, you need to say something about that. You need to express that joy by saying, this is wonderful. There's something about those words which completes the joy you have in the cake. The same with uh, uh, watching a football match when your team scores. Why do people jump up and down and celebrate? Because there's something about expressing the joy which completes the joy. Same is true with God. When you delight in God, you want to express your delight by, by worshipping and uh, 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 joyfully and so the first thing about worship is that it's joyful but the second thing is that worship is to be thoughtful verse 4 for you O Lord have made me glad by your work at the works of your hands I sing for joy how great are your works O Lord your thoughts are very deep now what are God's thoughts what are what is God's work uh, and his works uh, what are the things that he has done? Well, God has done two things. He has created the world, created it out of nothing, designed it. And he's redeemed us, redeemed us through the death of his son on the cross. And we are to, uh, 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 our worship is to, uh, it, it, it uh, should involve thinking about those things. Thinking about what God has done in creating the world thinking about what god has done in redeeming the world thinking about those things until we are impressed uh, by them until we stand in awe of them in stand in awe of his uh, his power his goodness his wisdom in uh, creating this world and until we stand in awe of his love and his faithfulness in sending his son to die for us 
and when we are uh, we should look at those things and focus on those things until those things impress on our hearts and our minds and that leads us to praise you see we are to rest on the sabbath on the lord's day we're to rest from our work and praise god for his work that's what the sabbath's all about and what's the alternative well the alternative is not to think you can have thoughtful worship or non-thoughtful worship. And thoughtful worship is thinking about God's works. Non-thoughtful worship is to be blind and ignorant to who God is and what he has done. Verse 6, the stupid man cannot know. The fool cannot understand this. The alternative to seeing and thinking is to be blind and ignorant. And that's what we all are by nature. We're blind to history. We don't see God's hand in history ordering the world we don't we're, we're blind to nature we don't see god's power uh, and creative power designing this beautiful world we're blind to the gospel we don't see his mercy and his grace and if we stay like that then we are we, we are foolish we are stupid stupid isn't a comment on our mental ability but it's a comment on how we use it we're like beasts that perish and, and, and what is it uh, that uh, those who are foolish and stupid uh, fail to grasp. Well, we're told, verse 7, uh, uh, that though the wicked sprout like grass and all evil doers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. Uh, one of the things that um, the lack of uh, thought, the ignorance and the blindness to who God is and his ways, uh, uh, it, it leads us to forget that life is short the, the the cycle of the wicked is short sprouting like grass that's what we do dying the following day and ignorance uh, 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 the, the other thing that uh, uh, foolish and stupid people fail to grasp is the glory of god uh, they fail to grasp how great are god's works how glorious and wonderful they are and what's the result? Well, it's doom. It's destruction. Uh, verse 8. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. <laughs> the enemies of God, the uh, rival gods, will be scattered like chaff blown away. That's the result of not thinking. Uh, it's the result of ignorance. Um, so our worship should be thoughtful. We should remember who God is and what he has done, creating and redeeming us. But also, worship should be flourishing. Verse 10. For you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. Um, you have poured over me fresh oil. The horn, uh, horns refer to power. And, and God's life in us uh, um, is to make us vigorous, flourishing. Even though outwardly we might be wasting away, inwardly worship renews us. That's why he talks about fresh oil, uh, being raised up and consecrated. And there's a joy there which enables us to, uh, to be strong, even though physically we might get weaker and weaker as we get older and older. Uh, the righteous, uh, my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Unlike the wicked, which are, are, uh, although flourish for a moment, actually over the longer term, die away. Those who worship the Lord flourish and uh, and get stronger through as they get older there's a freshness about their age uh, freshness about their life even though they get older verse 14 they still bear fruit in old age they are ever full of sap and green to declare that the lord is upright he's my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him our strength uh, given to us is given to us to praise and to worship God.
Now, how is all this possible? Well, it's possible through Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ is the ultimate horn. He's the ultimate uh, expression of God's power. He's the anointed one, the king. And, and God has made him to flourish. See, through his death and through his resurrection, God has exalted him. And, and life is found now in him, the king of the universe. And if you connect with him, then your life will flourish as well. And as you worship him, as you connect with him in worship and praise, that's how we uh, have lives which don't wither away, even though outwardly we might waste away. Inwardly, we will be renewed. And so let's praise and worship God joyfully, thoughtfully, and in a flourishing way. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless.